What could people do in order to to protect themselves more or to avoid getting manipulated? Would you have any any tips or tricks for the different uh, well, different types? I mean, I would actually start with yourself with self awareness. So it's hard to see manipulations in other people if you don't know yourself first. And if you are being manipulated, it can be very helpful to esteem yourself and value yourself by starting with, well, who am I? Uh, what is my underlying personality? You know, we can have our personality warped by years in a toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah? So it's good to sort of think, well, who was I originally? Yeah. <laughs> if I go back to whenever, 18 years old, before uh, a certain relationship started, what was I like then? What was the essence of who mm. I really am? So mm. I'd always start with, who am I, and getting a good grounding in that. But then what you're inviting is you need to be able to accurately read other people. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to notice when they're, when they're not just overextended in a normal way. This is a systematic, you know, abusive relationship. So it's about being able to notice when that's happening. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think... An understanding of who you are and a, an ability to read other people and understand when they're triggering and trying to cause you to overextend is is an incredibly helpful thing to do. I'm trying to think what else I would say. You're, you're inviting me to say, how can you sort of, what can you practically do is what you're really asking. Yeah, pretty much. I think on the one hand, what you're saying is it's really important to understand where do we stand ourselves. Mm. When we overextend, how do we overextend typically? What are the symptoms? Mm. And then let's say somebody who's highly people focused mm -hmm. and will overextend on that side. Are there any tips that you would suggest to be able to 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 maintain a bit of control or any any way they can rebalance the different energies or dial something up or dial something down i mean if you are aware it's it's happening if you are aware the other person is dysfunctional you know they're toxic um you you somehow need to affirm to yourself that 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 is what they're doing and not let it in to impact you as much. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of being aware of the different, let's say the four different archetypes of manipulation somebody else can do. Yeah. Four different reactions, like our arch archetypical reactions we can have. Mm. Then if we're having the reaction, pay attention to the behavior that's coming on the other side. And if that starts matching, then maybe hit the pause button, mm. observe the dynamic, take a step back. And it could actually just be, uh, now that I think of it, just say something like, um, I'm going to need a while to think about that. You might have a point. I mean, that would be a practical thing. What detaching, I think, is the thing to do. If I'm aware someone is trying to trigger me, yeah, um, and in the past have triggered me, mm -hmm. the most useful thing to do is some way of disassociating, yes, so that they don't trigger me um, anymore. It can be naming what they're doing, so you, yes. you're letting them know that you can see the game that's being played. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if yep. that's dangerous name it in your head but at the end of the day there needs to be a way either detaching or disassociating from the circumstance i mean ultimately if it really is toxic you need to get out of that relationship yes and i know that's easier said than done that's yeah. true it's, it's something i've noticed actually having people just ask the question like mm. what are you doing mm. or wh wh why are you saying that what's going on here mm. um and sometimes i remember being in the situation where i'd name what was happening and I'd see the, the rage on the other side just become mm. a smirk. And that I, it took me decades to understand what was happening. But just have the smirk of, you know, I, I got you going there, finally. Yes. And I didn't realize a game, sort of game of cat, uh, cat and mouse. Mm -hmm. But I think indeed, name, like you say, either naming verbally, orally, or just in our head. And if mm -hmm. we realize something weird is happening in our head, shut down, go uh, gray stone, gray rock, yeah. disengage quickly, uh, create space. Um, and it's a weird thing because then there's a likelihood they project of saying you're, you're, you're closing me off emotionally. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it's okay to close off emotionally and get a bit of space if we need a bit of space. Yeah. So that can be a bit unsettling where they, they project onto us the things that they would do so we don't do it. But if we need space, a bit of breathing space, then it's only healthy to take that. I mean, one, one technique that um, I sometimes advocate uh, draws on a little bit of cognitive behavioural therapy um, or rational emotive behavioural yeah. therapy. And the, the gist of it is 
you don't let lies get inside your head. So often when people are manipulating, they're asserting things as true, yes. and you're absorbing them as true. And actually, if you really thought about, about it, they're really, really not. Yes. So the idea that um, if somebody asserts something, you take a moment to think, is that actually true, or is it not true? Or do we just not know? So um, you, you might find yourself, if someone says something quite extreme and asserts it as a truth, you could simply say, I'm, uh, let me think about that. You're saying whatever. Let me think. I'm not sure if that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah? I'm not sure if that would really stand up. And what you're doing is you're not letting in false beliefs because they're often trying to put false beliefs yes. inside your head. That's very true. Um, Another thing that you can do is after the event, if it has happened, Mm -hmm. you can process the dialogue you've had with someone that's been doing this to you. You can write down. I often find if you write down the things that people have said, their absurdity becomes really clear. In the moment, if you're high in empathy, you're not processing them rationally. Mm -hmm. You're in the dialogue trying to smooth the conflict. But if afterwards you write down some of the key things that were said and then go through it and say... Would that stand up in a court of law? If I went to a court of law Mm. and a judge was to look at it, this thing that was said there, this assertion about me putting me down or whatever it might be, would it stand up? If the answer is no, strike it out. And that's a way of strengthening your resolve next time you meet that person to say, I'm not taking these things that are not true from you. I like I that. Hope that. That makes sense. Somehow. That's that's a very, yeah. it's a very good point uh, mm. on, on many levels. One of them is it brings some power back to us. So we're not yeah. delegating power away to another person. Mm-hmm. We can, we can reason, reason and think through it as in the thing the person is asserting, is it humanly possible to know this with absolute certainty? Yeah or not. If it isn't, well, that's that. You know, it means they're, they're deluding yeah. themselves. If it is possible, why would this person specifically know it? Yes. Does it even make any sense? Like, r- yeah. just the whole big picture framework? And then, you know, would another point of view be acceptable or possible? Mm-hmm. Uh, if this is true, what else is true? And I found, like, uh, there's sometimes debates about, you know, taste, which, you know, band is better or whatever, which is, you know, normally just banter. When someone attacks somebody else because of taste, there's no objective measurement Mm -hmm. to know which artist is better than another. The question doesn't even mean anything. Yeah, I mean, for me, then, it's quite okay to say, is it true, is it not true? Actually, I don't know. And sometimes just saying I don't know is a pretty good antidote as well. Just take the certainty out of it. Um, What what I found that works quite nicely also is to just say i'm confused Mm. you know it sounds like you're saying this Mm. and i'm 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 just confused i need a time to think about it Mm. which can work because it sounds like they are being confusing but we're taking the blame so if they accuse us of being confused we agree yeah i'm i'm confused that's why i need time and Mm. that can buy us a little bit of breathing space to to just think a bit more clearly and disengage. Yeah. Uh, and I think. And you'll, you'll often find people that have, for want of a better term, the gift of the gab and they can um, blush to you and so on. If you actually, in the cold light of day, write down what they've said, it's, it will become very evident. Yes. The, the logical flaws and the nonsense. But in the moment, it's gripping. They, exactly. They know how to get inside your head. That, that's something yeah. I, uh, I noticed when I, was, when I was studying. That looking back to a lot of the texts we read, it was word salad. But <laughs> yeah. we believed there was something clever yeah. to it in social sciences because it was a professor who wrote it and a famous professor, so they yes. had the clout. So obviously, if I don't understand it, the problem is me mm. as opposed to it actually doesn't make sense. And a few decades later, I look back at it and I realize it, it, it doesn't make sense. It's, I, I wouldn't be able to describe this mm. in a way that makes sense. I see contradictions in it, but I was too young to understand that. But you're mm. right about can I can I write it down? Can I explain it? If I can't, maybe just take a step back, suspend my judgment, and yeah. admit I can't really make sense of this. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that helps sort of ungaslight ourselves, and that's sort of mm-hmm. the the goal of this. Uh, 